summer versus thermal. We had lots and lots of questions from you guys about this topic. At first we decided to do a short, but uh, we have enough material for a long form. We're gonna go through it together. We're filming most of this stuff in Estonia or Finland and it does not get very hot here. So the maximum we're looking at is around 30 degrees Celsius. Welcome to our studio. Watch us yap in front of a green screen. Uh, let's take a look at the first video. Yeah, sure. uh, we have plenty of those. So uh, let's take a look at the first video and uh, see what's up. And, and uh, we're using this device. Finland in the summer, 25 plus degrees. That's the max for Finland, I guess. <laughs> like those current videos are in pretty dense vegetation. So that's what really puts the thermal to the test. So here you can see it's actually uh, dense enough or maybe the sun isn't shining, but it's warm outside. So the tree trunks and the rest of the environment yeah, hasn't warmed up. So the heat signatures from the humans and uh, the cars are actually very easily detectable. I would say that the Red Hot uh, works here pretty good. Yeah. So there's not too much uh, noise from Red Hot. I it remember depends it. a lot on the time of day. Yeah, yeah. If, if it's but I remember it, it, it was really warm. I think there's maybe just some uh, high, the, like the trees are quite tall and there's high vegetation. So the sunshine, sunlight doesn't, yeah. sun, sunlight doesn't uh, get uh, reach the ground. So you still have uh, huge uh, temperature differences. Even mm. though the air temperature is high, it doesn't mean that the trees and the ground itself gets mm. that high. And what's cool here, you see actually the red hot uh, reflection from the lake. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. I would say like this thermal has no issues there. And yeah, here oh, it works really well. Yeah. And uh, there was a moment like this current clip is that uh, somebody uh, saw movement uh, while looking down a road. And then uh, we checked with uh, thermals and instantly saw them. So here with the naked eye, we couldn't see anything, but we heard some uh, noises in front of us. And then uh, this thermal is currently mounted on a rifle. As you see, it's a really thick uh, spruce forest. So if, you, if you're just looking with naked eye, if someone has any camo on at all, uh, then you probably won't see those little spots yeah, yeah, that yeah. Uh, shine through the, uh, between the trees. Won't. But that's where a thermal actually picks up everything. So this is probably the heat record for Finland. So 30 degrees Celsius in Finland in very thick vegetation. Currently the PFN is mounted in front of an LPVO. So you can, uh, between the vegetation, you can spot some uh, red hot signatures. Maybe not enough to take a shot. Oh, like uh, this is clear. Yeah, this is clear. So it's uh, warm outside and as you can see, the red hot is uh, actually starting to be a problem here. Uh, it's going to give you a lot of uh, signatures, which you might stop you from uh, seeing more detail yeah. or looking at the right stuff. Yeah, here we can see that there's something that resembles a human, but it's yeah. uh, but if it's uh, very standing still in one place. So it all depends on the angle of the sun and uh, how hot the ground gets. During the summer, while it's day, I usually don't use Red Hot myself personally, but nighttime, no questions. Yeah, so as we can see, the thermal is still very, very useful, even during the day, even during the summer. Usually you just hear a noise towards some direction and you check it with a thermal and this will just uh, confirm if there's somebody there or not, because otherwise they're wearing camouflage, you're just observing in that direction and you can't even see them. Yeah, that's a pretty crisp image. You can see there's a bunch of dudes, probably like a squad or something. And uh, those guys don't have thermals. There's, uh, if he's behind some vegetation, there's no chance of them seeing, seeing the mm. guy with the thermal. In reality, you could already engage from that distance and just start shooting, so. If just one guy has so this. That would uh, be a clean kill right there. Yeah. Just you could, it's around 27 Celsius. And uh, the distances are from, uh, on the right side, you see I'm walking there. Uh, that's close to 300 meters away. When you're out in the open, of course, it's easy to see. I'm walking on like a high uh, berm or something and the background isn't hot at all. But if I was walking uh, near the tires or the targets that are in the back, it would be hard to distinguish if I stood still even more so. Uh, it was midday. It gets really hot, a lot hotter than human body temperature. It's actually hot to the touch. So during daylight, you need to focus more on uh, looking for movement, yeah, not so yeah, much uh, like the hot human signatures. Well, and if uh, like this, this has a bunch of stuff uh, like tires, signs, targets, uh, 
everything that's out in the open and it gets hot. If you're just patrolling through the woods and there's no man-made stuff, then usually See, what gets hot is uh, like a tree stump. There was a point, point there, if, uh, if you stood yeah. still in that spot, then... Uh, Completely burned in, yeah. So yeah, during daylight, it's actually, it's a good idea to uh, use thermal. And if you're suspicious, you can always use your yeah. day scope uh, your magnification to uh, yeah, check. You just see something hot that resembles a human or might be something, mm -hmm. flip it out, zoom with your uh, day sights or magnification, whatever, and then check it out if it is something or not. Here we have uh, the same spot actually filmed or taken a picture of during different uh, times of day and also time of year. So we have it during cold and uh, at night time, and this one is daytime. So this is daytime, 27 Celsius. Obviously, red hot is not the right choice here because you can't even actually see much movement. If there's wind, everything is moving. So evening, same spot. I think red hot is already way better. Yeah. So did, if you use red hot and see that there's no random signatures, like a blade of grass is red hot, you just see like a tire and uh, targets at the back of the range. I would already use red hot because if somebody would come over the berm, yeah, you would then see that that's right away. instantly you could see it. So and now it's the same spot. Yep, but differently, diff different uh, time. So it's in October, but here red hot is uh, probably ideal. We're looking towards the 300 meter berm. Very noisy. If someone was laying down, you're not going to pick it up. And the same during uh, fall. So cold outside. A lot more noisier during the summer, with red hot at least. One thing you can actually tell here is that uh, uh, colors have switched. So uh, during this, during the fall, the sand is, is uh, black and uh, like trees are white hot. And during summer, it's the opposite. So things heat and cool down at different uh, different rates. Yeah. And it's the same color palette. Red hot is essentially a white hot with a layer of red on the hottest parts. So. Uh, we can see that during the summer, the berm on the back of the shot is hotter than the trees, which makes sense because it's sand and sun is di directly shining onto it. But on the other hand, uh, during the fall, we can see that the trees have a greater temperature than the, than the sun. And there's, there's, there's some body of water uh, which reflects the sky, so that's why it's hot. Here we're looking at uh, different price range uh, thermals during uh, daylight and it's really warm outside 29 degrees celsius it's a range and it's around 350 meters away yeah. as you can see from a cheap <laughs> thermal which is 600 euros uh, <laughs> that's trash that it looks like modern art so <laughs> can't really tell of course you can still see some movement you yeah. can tell that something <laughs> that's warm is there but that's about it you can tell it's a car yeah, but uh, that's a very low resolution thermal yeah. and the picture looks this bad already from yeah. 300 meters. So, so I would consider this one a toy. Uh, more, more. Like the, it, it's better, better than, than nothing, nothing, of course. The th thing was that they broke. Like we had a bunch of warranty issues with them and then we stopped selling them. And so this is 500, which is just... Uh, that's yeah. Like, so yeah, as you see, this is a very cheap thermal during the day. Some, it does something, but not the best. So this is already like a mid-range thermal. So 384 Rezo is actually already pretty decent. Uh, you can tell that those are people. They have guns yeah. from uh, 350 meters away. So I would say this is already quite decent. Quite decent, quite decent but uh, can be better. But uh, the price range is already high enough that maybe save some more money and get like yeah, an actual device. Yeah, yeah, there's like, well, it's easy to say, but if you're already planning on spending 2.5k or something yeah. maybe just just wait just wait get a little get a little bit more and just and go, you can get the device that's go a lot over better. the threshold yeah. that's just like a much better device so so yeah like the cheaper thermal does its job but there's not enough field of view like with this one you get much more situation awareness like the i3 had the big housing, you can't helmet mount it, mm. can't weapon mount it. It's so just a handheld device. This, this is uh, a multifunctional device. Yeah. That one was pretty much has one function because it's you're not going to use it anywhere else other than on a weapon. You don't want to walk around with it in your hand. Mm. But so. I think it's like taking into account that this is a day that's 29 Celsius. Mm. These thermals are performing insanely well. Yep. Like, if you take some older thermals, like the Fleur Breach, for example, 
then like you can't see pretty much you can't see anything and now the most <laughs> high-end oh, thermal this is an expensive one yeah. and a large one it's like this large detail is great like there's vegetation on those trees but then you can clearly see the branches and everything. Yeah, it's uh, so detailed you can actually yeah, count them. It, it would be incredible if, the, if it would be possible to get that quality from this device mm -hmm. and I hope it's uh, just a few years away. That would be the dream. Actually, 500 yeah. meters away it's actually, yeah. Like you super can... clear image, like uh, it doesn't even feel that it's a super hot day or anything. Yeah. Like, imagine how this performs during the winter or just oh. during the fall or just whatever, like not double digit temperatures. Yeah, but it comes with the price tag. Yeah, and, and it's also it. quite large. So, if the thermal is too large that you don't want to take it with you on patrol, then it's kind of useless. Yeah, like we, uh, we had that issue a lot that uh, we had these giant thermals that can see four clicks away, but you do, you're not gonna take it with you. Yeah, because you still like, need water, you need ammo, you need yeah. all that stuff. I guess only if you're like a vehicle mounted unit yeah. that doesn't go far away from your vehicles and then you're working in very open terrain in like desert environment yeah. and then you have like a bunch of line of sight and then you come out and take your huge term and look with it. But uh, that's if you stay out for, for a week <laughs> and you have to walk the whole way, yeah. that's, that's what I'm taking. How do you counter or how do you work against thermals? One thing that is often used is doing your movement and like tactical stuff during washout hours. What's that? That's when the sun has gone down. It's uh, light enough. You can't really use night vision. It's uh, dark enough that you can't see with plain vision and uh, surfaces are still hot from uh, the warm day or the sunlight. And that's when you can actually move around. So there's a person laying down over there in the center and uh, there's a lot of noise from uh, from mm -hmm. the red hot still but as you can mm -hmm. see movement you could spot it easily easily, easily yeah. could but, spot uh, it. but he could actually when he would not be walking straight up he would he could crawl from uh, from yeah. the depth of the yeah. forest and actually not make too much of a signature so right there if you're just scanning you wouldn't take a second look so if you're planning your infill or exfil or whatever then uh, still too much light for night vision to work but it's your vision is still impaired because the sun has just set and stuff is still hot and uh, how long would you say this like window lasts like half an hour it probably depends a lot on uh, wind and everything else and uh, time of time of the year but uh, it's probably between half an hour and two hours uh, really dependent on, on many factors. So how, how hot the sun was, how hot all the, mm -hmm. uh, all the surfaces got, and uh, probably humidity plays a huge role. So here you go. Uh, I hope that answers your questions. Thermals still work during summer. The effectiveness, of course, is reduced, especially during daytime. Washout hours are a thing, so use them to your advantage. Thing that gives you away the most is movement. So if there's a lot of signatures, Movement is still something that will give you away. We are really interested in uh, how you like this format. So let us know in the comments and see you next time.